shit. Hello, hello, hello. It is Wednesday and it's time for Pop and Politics. We are live talking about the latest in hot topics, news and entertainment. I'm KJ and let me introduce you to my co-host. Of course, we have Crystal. Hey guys. Yana <laughs> and Shelly E. Hi everybody. As I always say, join the conversation by leaving a comment on YouTube or Twitter. We will check the comments periodically throughout the show. And don't just comment, subscribe. If you miss us on YouTube, you can also watch us on Rumble. You can listen to us also on, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, we are an independent media, and if you want to support what we do, we certainly appreciate our super chatters. We certainly appreciate the donations. Uh, any amount is appreciated. You know, this is not just a podcast. It is a movement of God-fearing, truth-seeking, America-loving people that understand we are in urgent times, and there's a target on our back because guess what? We love freedom. Yep. But yet we still stand. We all must continue to stand, stand together as a community. So that's why it's great if you can subscribe to help amplify our rallying call for freedom. All right, ladies, let's set it off. Let's go. <laughs> so uh, tonight we are starting a little differently. We have a special guest with us tonight, Jerome Davison. Welcome, Jerome. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm really blessed and I'm excited to be on here and share my vision for America, share a vision for our freedom in the future. Absolutely. Well, that's why we love you. We're happy to have you here. Jerome is running for the U.S. U.S. Congress in Arizona's District 4. Um, if he looks uh, somewhat familiar to you all, take a look at this, his, his, uh, his video for his ad, his ad for his uh, campaign. Democrats like to say that no one needs an AR-15 for self-defense. That no one could possibly need all 30 rounds. But when this rifle is the only thing standing between your family and a dozen angry Democrats in Klan hoods, you just might need that semi-automatic in all 30 rounds. All right. And all 30 rounds. All, all 30 rounds. Yes. Right. That's yes. right. Well, Jerome, again, thanks for being here. And look, I have a question for you. Why that ad, that message at this time? Well, at the time when I shot that ad and I released it, there was that Texas shooting down there. And the Democrats was going crazy about taking our guns. It's really ironic that they refuse to take the guns away from the criminals in the black community. They won't. They let them be a terror to us even shooting out funerals, but they want to take and confiscate the guns from uh, everyday citizens and, and law-abiding citizens. So as soon as that Texas shooting hit, I told my team, hit it. There you go. And we dropped it. I wanted to show them that I'm very bold, okay? Once I've discovered my truth, once I know what the truth is, it is just like my faith in Jesus Christ. Once I found him, that was it. There's no looking back. There's no other God. There's no other name mm. but the name of Jesus. So I said, this is it. And boy, did it catch fire. All right. All right. Um, I, 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 we want to hear about your campaign. Um, one question I have for you, Jerome, is regarding the fentanyl crisis. So by many estimates, fentanyl overdose is now the leading cause of death for Americans aged 18 to 49. China is the primary source of fentanyl uh, with the help of illegal immigration. Our border is wide open. Drug cartels are bringing in this fentanyl uh, across our, our southern border. What should be done to stop this? You're, you're hailing from Arizona. You guys have a border issue there as well. What should be done to stop this? Well, one of the things that I was saying that the, is that uh, China, China is at war with America. Not only are they doing this chemical war, but they were the, at the helm of the COVID release. Shut our country down for two years. 
They shut the entire world down. And now they are producing these drugs and bringing them in here to America. And Mexico is also involved. And the uh, the president of Mexico is telling Joe Biden uh, that he have to accept these Americans. Our country is uh, susceptible to danger right now because Joe Biden has been a corrupt person when it comes to China and Mexico. I will vote to go to war with Mexico or with China. But the first thing we want to do is uh, levy some uh, some sanctions against both of them. Um, Jerome, I love your story. I think it's amazing. I think a lot of times when we see African American leaders, they always have like the sad story. I actually got a chance to research and you actually had your dad and your mom. And I know yeah. that father absence is plaguing the um, not it's not even just the African American community. It's like plaguing America at this point. Like, how do you hope to get that message across of strong families, um, make strong communities, makes a stronger American? Well, we just keep showing the, the black people who you are. You're very powerful, right? Uh, you're, you're, you mean something. And this is why they came up with the plan to devise this plan to kill 63 million American, black American babies, mm -hmm. along with the Hispanic babies, because Margaret Sanger said that we don't need these black weeds to grow in America. And so we only make up 12 percent in this country. But I want to show black men that you can make it. I played in the NFL. I've written books. I've pastored. I've traveled. And, and this country, nobody stood in front of me when I got that full ride scholarship scholarship from Arizona State. But it was my father who taught me hard work, who was a truck driver, and my mother who taught me faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I just combined those great teachings. My father taught me to be tough. He's a man. My mother, I needed her feminine side to show me uh, how to be diplomatic with people. And, uh, and that's what we need in our black community. These guys is coming up now. They're too uh, in touch with their feelings when most <laughs> men can talk something out. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was your, what's your question? Well, first of all, um, that video, the campaign video is very, is great. Yeah. And that was, Thank you. Yeah. that was really great because first of all, it's really artistically done, really well done. Um, it really, it's shocking. Mm. So I'm sure it gra grasped a lot of people, people's attention. And so that's, uh, and a lot of people think about racism constantly. It's like, you know, in America, I feel like people are obsessed with, with this concept. So I think that that was really smart to use that in the campaign video. Um, Crystal mentioned about family values and my question about education so in america in general and in your state uh education is is suffering uh children are suffering they're not getting proper education uh they also taught things that are probably well definitely inappropriate to them instead of something that they need to learn so there's things like you know gender uh theory and um you know, all these things, mm -hmm. se sexual things that are being introduced to them through mm -hmm. schools that they're not supposed to be learning. Um, and so what is your policy on education, how to improve it, how to make it more effective and how to eliminate these negative things? Control the money. Control the money, baby. Here in Arizona, we use half about 75 percent of our budget goes to education. But here's the deal. Democrats are, they are uh, principals, vice principals, and the assistant vice principals. All of them make 200K a year, and they get a retirement, and they are the teachers, and they're bringing in this sexuality stuff, this CRT, and all of this stuff. So they get paid, right, to, to indoctrinate our children, to sexualize them. And most of them are pedophiles. Most of them have a sick sexual fantasy, fantasy with children. So here's what I want to do. School choice. You take the money away from them by allowing children to go where they want to go to a private school or to other schools that are not in the poor areas. And then number two, which is the greatest thing, enhance parental rights. Yes. Have parents to where they can, they can talk about what the curriculum is going to be in the public schools, all right? They should have a say on what the teachers could teach in that school because most of those people in this school, you go in there and they're the rainbow colored hair people who are, who are weird, they are Marxist, and they hate children. If the children have just so happened to make it past the gauntlet of abortion, 
Then they, they bring them out and they try to give them gender dysphoria or give them some type of mutilating sexual surgery that where they'll never ever populate. They'll never have a family. And then they get them in college and indoctrinate them further. So uh, control the money and then uh, enhance parental rights. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. I, lo I love how strong yeah. you are. Like, I, I just believe that just more men. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And how like bold. That. I mean, yes. it said exactly what pe what's on people's mind. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, oh, on that bro. video, after, after my video went viral, I got poisoned. I was poisoned. I was in the hospital fighting for my life for six days just before the primary in 2020. Oh, my God. This. Listen, this politics is no game. It's this, oh, yes. this is the warfare. Mm -hmm. I have tried to tell pastors and preachers and black people in the community, this is the brawl for it all. And this is why they want to eliminate people like me. I just got kicked off of Facebook for no reason. No reason. Mm -hmm. Of course. Wow. I, I want to ask before we let you go, what, how can people assist your campaign? And what is, is there anything that you need? What is something for volunteers or donations? How can people find you and assist you in your campaign? Well, I'm definitely going to need people to make phone calls. And that's going to help me make up for my uh, really uh, anemic finances, right? So we can get people to make phone calls, uh, raise money, let them know about me here in Arizona. I've actually been, uh, they're suppressing my name, right? They don't want people to know that I'm a pastor and a former NFL player and that uh, I've written books and traveled. They don't want that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, go to my website, Jerome for Congress, J-E-R-O-N-E for Congress.com. Make a donation. And those of you who believe in prayer, please pray for me. Pray for President Donald Trump. Pray yeah. for people like me who are fighting for this country because this is this is mostly a spiritual battle. Right. Yeah, wow. For sure. Wow. For sure. Well, thank you for coming on tonight, Jerome. Yeah, for sure. I hope y'all have me back on. We will. I hope y'all have me back on and set me loose because I'll go crazy. I, I, I'll be preaching. <laughs> if God be for you. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Thank All you guys. right. Well, we will certainly have you back on. Give us an update about your campaign. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks. Take care. All right. He's so cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like him. I'm about yeah. to share his stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, really, that scared me that he said that, you know, you this can. happened to him. Yeah. That he was, And also, I mean, that people, after, people are really after someone like that. Yeah, yeah but Angela's like, terrifying. <clears throat> Angela Stanton King actually said that. She said no one, she was like, she said the real streets, the real thr mm. thugs. Mm -hmm. That ain't, she said, I thought I knew the real thugs. The real thugs are in politics. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's why I so we have to pray for this. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. yeah. It's, yep. it's, it's they say. not a joke. Yeah. 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 We, that's why we, that's why we, I was just about to say that we have to can keep each other and uh, Jerome lifted up in prayer mm -hmm. because what we, the Bible say, we wrestle not against flesh, flesh and, and blood. blood, but in pr principalities and, and, Spirit and principality in high, in high places, right? Yeah. So, rulers of darkness. Yes, indeed. So, um, definitely check out his website if you can. Donate. Okay. Again, we are a community of God fearing, truth seeking, America loving patriots, people. And just like Jerome, um, we want to support each other. Again, as I mentioned, week after week, we are the remnant. You yes, know, there's yes. not many of us, so we need to stay solid, stay un unified, and lift each other up. So wow. thanks again, Jerome, for, for uh, coming on with yeah, us. Yeah. 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 yeah, we definitely have to have him back on to talk more about yeah. that. Uh, yeah. All right, so uh, we are moving right along to local issue here that actually you guys and has been pretty amplified across the nation. Here in Baltimore, as many of you know, this is where we live and work, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge uh, collapsed. There was an, a terrible accident Tuesday uh, after a large container ship ran into it leading six presumed deaths and millions of dollars in possible damage. There's been new information tonight. I believe two of the six people uh, have been found. Unfortunately, their, their bodies have been no. found. Uh, 
Oh, the, yeah, the two more. more. They're, they're, re, oh, okay. they're in recovery. Right. Yeah. To survive. Oh, to, to survive. survive. To survive. Okay. Yeah. But, but, yeah. But some were found today. Yeah, they weren't. Yeah. Six were missing. Right. Six were missing. Much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, my goodness. Um, so, we're going to talk about this. Uh, before we begin, I want to play this clip. This is clip five, just giving some additional information of this terrible uh, accident. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Unbelievable. Wow. Mm. Sheesh. It looked like the Titanic just going down. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know it wasn't any sound. There is I don't sound. think that yeah. one was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So um, that, I mean, happened around 1.30 a.m. here in Baltimore, Maryland. Shelly, what were your thoughts when you first heard this news story? Actually, when I first heard it, I thought it was someone talking about a fiction book. And they kept saying the bridge. And then I'm thinking, what bridge are they talking about? What book is this? And then, you know, later on, a couple hours later, when my head was a little clearer, um, it was the key bridge. And I'm like, what? The, you know, it was just unbelievable. The bridge was collapsed. I mean, like you said, an accident, a barge hit one of the support structures, and it literally collapsed. That bridge is literally about 20 minutes from where we are. Mm -hmm. You know, we can get to it it's about 20 minutes from where we're sitting right now. And to just think that it's just no more. Yeah. Well, Crystal. five minutes from her. Well, yeah. I mean, can I can mm -hmm. I yeah. add to that? So this really hits really close to home mm -hmm. because this is the bridge that I t took mm -hmm. to work and back oh, every yeah. day. Mm -hmm. And that morning, so as usual, I wake up, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like half asleep. I check my phone and I see the video. That's the first thing that I see when I open the phone. I had to go into Google and Google it because I didn't believe exactly. it. Exactly. I'm like, is this a fake? Like, what is this? Then I see it confirmed, and I'm telling my husband, I'm like, honey, the key bridge is gone. Like, I'm about to take it. Like, yeah. I'm waking up, like, in, in an hour, I was going to be on it. It's gone. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, it's really gone. Like, the, the barge hit it, and... And so he ran out and like went to see it because from our neighborhood, we could see, see the whole bridge and it's gone. I mean, it's the most surreal, one of the most surreal things in my life. Mm. Like, and honestly, like that really reminded me like it crashing. It reminded 9-11 to mm. me, like, mm. because I also, we lived um, in New York and we could see the tower. So it was like the same thing. I'm so mm. near it. It's mm. so close. And yeah. And just to, like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I want to. I want to play this next clip before I go to you, Crystal, because that this is uh, Mayor Brandon Scott here in Maryland talking about the incident. This is clip number four. Take a look. I want to get us to Mayor Brandon Scott, the mayor of Baltimore, uh, who is with us right now on the phone. Mayor Scott, first of all, I just want to say that I am uh, so sorry that your community is going through this right now and that there are families wondering and worrying uh, about their loved ones at this hour. Can you tell me so far what you know about exactly what happened here to the Francis Scott Key Bridge? Well, listen, we, we have an unspeakable tragedy. Uh, we know uh, that this vessel struck the bridge and the bridge collapsed. Uh, there were uh, individuals working on the bridge at that time. There are uh, cars in the water. Our fire department has confirmed that as they uh, lead this ongoing search and rescue mission uh, through sonar. Uh, that is where our focus is. It's about those souls and people that we're trying to uh, find and get out of this water. Uh, we know that there's uh, going to be questions about the bridge and traffic and the port but right now everyone in this world's focus should be about these souls and those families who are wondering if these people are going to walk back in the door after they walked out to work last night yeah that's a really good point that the, the anxiety of of all this and then plus just watching the video of what happened and how quickly the bridge failed can you give me some sense of what you thought at first light this morning when you saw the pictures of actually what that bridge looks like with the barge uh, slammed into it there, what were your initial thoughts? 
Well, it was something out of an action movie. It's something you never think you would see. And uh, being here right now looking at it is even more surreal. And it just makes you think about, again, those families, those individuals that were on that bridge, those folks that are even on that, that vessel, even more, because no one should have to endure. And I'm going to be the first to ask that CNN and everyone else stop showing the video. No one needs to see uh, a possibility of their family member being severely injured or otherwise over and over and over again, because it's just traumatizing our community. Fair enough, uh, Mayor. I- it ain't well, traumatizing. <laughs> it's yeah. not oh, traumatizing. Gonna, they scared have, we gonna look too close. No, I have to agree with him. Whatever. I think the callousness, it, it's got to go. Uh, like today, for example, I was walking in my neighborhood. And so what's been happening is that people from all over are driving into our neighborhood because the news said the, the best views are from our neighborhood. <laughs> so everyone is driving there. It's like a closed, you know, it's like, not a drive-through community, so everyone is now going there, and they're like, oh, hey, like, where's the best place to see the bridge? And I'm like, well, like, there's the water over there, and they're like, okay, well, you have cute pups, you know? Like, yeah. you can't say something like terrible tragedy or oh. something, like, the callousness, like, that is... It, it, I disagree with Mayor Scott with, with his take on not showing it for a couple of reasons. Number one, when there are other tragedies, as tragic as this is, when there are other tragedies, you don't hear him saying that. I know. The news focuses on the neighborhood where someone has been murdered or harmed. That's one thing. Number two, you mentioned 9-11. When 9-11 was, the, um, was tr- again, as horrible as it was, no one asked them to stop showing the loops. Yes, they have. We, the loops were shown. I think we need to show this because, number one, it's news, right? But we, our main focus, of course, and thank God for those first responders, right, that they went into action to cut off the ramps to the bridge because at night when people are driving, you wouldn't think that the Francis Scott Key Bridge is no more. There would have been more people falling into the water. But thank God for the first responders who are out there trying to recover the lost souls, the people there. I agree with that part. But I don't think Mayor Scott or anyone should ask the, the news to stop looping it. We don't loop it for anything else. I mean, we don't stop looping it for anything else. Again, um, I think this is um, as, as tragic as it is, it is also historic. And I think we do need to show it. I don't know how much, but just to ask them, CNN, he thinks he's well, we going to talk with CNN. We do right? have to yeah. talk. Let's, let's but, talk about, I mean, we all have yeah. different perspectives. Right. And yeah. This has affected us differently. I I haven't, I mean, I, I certainly don't drive over the Key Bridge every day. Right. I think none of us do. Right. Except for Yana. Except for Yana. So, but I and know. she does have a different perspective of how it affected her because she's something that she's, you know, used and, and frequented every day if they're coming to her neighborhood. So it's probably going to affect of people course. differently. Um, but like you mentioned, it is historic. And I want to take the, a, a moment to uh, play this next clip. This is clip two of President Bra- Biden talking about it. And then we will go into it. Speak briefly about the terrible incident and accident that happened in Baltimore this morning. At about 1.30, container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which I've been over many, many times commuting from the state of Delaware to our trainer by car. Been in Baltimore Harbor many times. And uh, the bridge collapsed, sending several people and vehicles into the water, into the river. And uh, multiple U.S. Coast Guard units, which are stationed very nearby, thank God, were immediately deployed along with local emergency personnel. All right. So, first of all, he's lying. I mean, <laughs> to lie, to just blatantly lie about something as simple as this, why? <laughs> Talking about he he used to take the train over the yeah. oh, Sir, Sorry. Yeah. Um, he did used to buy the train when he maybe, was, maybe it was senator. Yeah, but not over the key bridge. No, over the maybe key that bridge. was his son that um, died in the what? war. Um, <laughs> I just think that like okay, you guys, y'all know MAGA is gonna MAGA. Where is my MAGA crowd out there, y'all? Who is not buying that this is a tragedy? Who is not buying that this is somehow some accident? On Steve Bannon's war room, he actually talked about it, and he had Lara Logan on there, Lara Logan. and 
we are not talking about the fact that this is going to impact us big time. We this is one of the major shifts. Mm -hmm. um, major ports, excuse me, major ports second on the East Coast. Yeah, the second largest in the, in the United yeah. States. Like, this is a cyber attack. And they, the reason why they do not want us to keep looking at it, because the more you look at that thing, the more intentional it looks. I mean, serious, honest to God, like to see how that thing just, and it just so happened to go within the vein. And what I don't, um, I, what, what I don't understand is the naivete um, of us to think that you know we can just attack other people or hurt you know other pipelines i'm not going to say just end up you know and we can do all these things overseas and we're not vulnerable to something that happens like this i mean we have johns hopkins we have the largest hospitals all those supplies all those medical supplies all the fuel all of those things I believe that they are trying to hurt Americans and we have to stop like, you know, acting like we're immune to it. While I will lend some credence to the possibility that it could the be possibility. Yeah, I will lend credence to that. One of the one of the I guess issues I have is that number one, it wasn't even 10 hours before the conspiracy theories, I'm calling that for right now, before the conspiracy, the people weren't even literal, well, they were literally cold in their watery grave. So we didn't even give enough, I mean, time, let alone it's still, what, two days ago, right? That was my problem. Like, the conspiracy theories were, uh, theories were abounding. That's number one. Number two, I did hear, I, I didn't read it yet, but I did hear that within the last month, there has been a barge accident or two in China, some seas around China, and another part of of the world, not to mention the Houthis over in the Red Sea, you know, blocking that out where the where the ships have to go around all of Africa instead of cutting through the Red Sea and the, the canals over there. So I will lend credence that there to the possibility that this could be a terrorist or cyber related. However, everything that I've read and so far, so far points to it being an accident. And this is the third thing. One of the things with conspiracy theories is that, number one, when there's a lack of information, conspiracy theories will fill in those gaps. That's number one. Number two, because our government has lied to us so yes. much, so frequently, the conspiracy theories are gonna take over. We don't believe anymore that accidents can and do happen. Unfortunately, even barge accidents. Yeah, but I mean, you guys, like, what are the, like, what are the odds? I mean, like, come on, like, I mean, what are the, what are the odds that like the, the, one of the largest cargo ships hits one of the largest I mean, bridges they're... in the perfect spot that knocks it completely down? Like, not even you guys. You know, I, and one factor in all of that, and I'm not saying again, I'm not saying the conspiracy theories or the, that is no credence. One factor in that, uh -huh. everything that you just named, they're man-made. And man made are men making things, not men as far as sex, but just men are not perfect. We don't make perfect things. We do have fallibility. So you're missing that part of the calculation. I don't I'm not only that. I live right there. And so it's a it's actually pretty narrow path they have to they have to go really into is. to be exactly in the middle of that bridge. If they veer off a little bit they will hit the bridge. Mm -hmm. So, and I can see, I mean, you can see in the video that the uh, boat is struggling it and is. Uh, it's veering off. So I'm not discounting that mm -hmm. it could have been, you That's know, exactly. something that affected the boat. Exactly. But I would not say that the person, the people that were on the boat were like, ooh, you know, we got to... No, like no, no, no. They're not saying that. They're saying that the power went out and it was a cyber attack, meaning somebody took control of the boat. This is this is what this okay. is what they're saying that the power went out. The boat was like steered into like you know, and, and all of that stuff is electrical. Now I don't know. All I it know is steered. the math they mad. It, it was steered. It looked like it drifted. If it was steered, it, it would have not been. lost power. Exactly. It would have been exactly. like the no, nine, no, no. What I'm saying it would have been, been like the 9/11 where they were actually right. flying the plane. You can't steer it if so, there's no power. It's going to go it, into like a neutral, like yeah. your car. Do you guys almost? not understand how elect, like how it's yeah. ran by? Yeah. Like, like electric. If there's no electricity, it's not gonna. You can't steer it. The electricity went off. Exactly. Then it came back on. There was then hard. it went it's off. Hard. Power and the, surges. Right. It's like you have when you're home. So sometimes. you're saying there's no electricity there. You can't steer no. it. I saw the lights come on. That's not. I saw saying. them go off. I saw them come a, back on. There was a shortage somewhere. There was a shortage somewhere. So a shortage means that there's electricity. Can we agree on that? It means that so don't say that there's no electricity that it can't be no, steered. No, they're saying it went off no, and they, came back on. They're saying that there's no electricity, so how do you steer it? 
Yeah, there was electricity. It came back on no, for a second. It's so like when you start your car. Yeah, but, but hold on. We got it. I mean, you can't say two things at once. Right. Hey, so yeah. what are the two things? No, you're saying that you they could have. Uh, they were steering it. I'm not saying that. That's what my people are saying. No, no, no. Okay. But you are ca saying what they're saying. I'm saying so, what they're saying. So I mean, but we're saying that if people were steering it, then we would have not had exactly. this power outage twice. It's obvious it was in distress. Exactly. So I mean, for to me, I think I'm leaning towards it's an accident. How accidents happen? Yes. However, I do <clears throat> see symbolism in what has happened. Well, then I it's think it's the Francis Scott Key Bridge, exactly. which represents America and the, the founding of America, and it's also a bridge that is a connection that connects, you know, different... One side to the other. Yeah, the I north can... and the south and, you know, the different groups in America. And when I saw it today, I was walking there, uh, walking the dogs, and I see it, and it's, it looks so, so symbolic mm -hmm. how what has happened to America, yeah. mm -hmm. that we're disjointed, that there's a rift, and that is not easily fixable. This is going to take forever and yeah. i don't know what's gonna how what how, what, how good the next bridge well let me say this we should here. all listen to our mayor and stop watching it <laughs> well we're not watching it you might find out something well um i want to speak to what you said about the historic mm -hmm. part of it because uh one thing i haven't heard talked about is that so we know francis scott key which is the name of the bridge is the writer of our Star Spangled Banner. Yes, yes. And so I'm waiting for leftists to, you know, <laughs> this jo dem, uh, Joe Biden Democrats, demo Marxists is what I've been calling them, have been kneeling for the last several years, have um, been not paying homage to our our, our, our nation's uh, Star Spangled Banner, our, our um, what do you call it? The, um, the national, national, anthem. national anthem. And so now we have this bridge named by, for that. The person who who um, who named the bridge is named after created the Star Spangled Banner. Um, and so I'm wondering, you know, you know it's kind of like like you mentioned, it's, it's it is kind of symbolic, the symbolic that, you know, they've been kneeling all this time. Yeah. Um, and and now we want, you know, wonder when they're going to start saying anything about that. Well, they're going to probably, I wouldn't put it past them to think or to say that when we start rebuilding the bridge to rename it. Right, that's oh, what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, I hope not. I, I hope, hope not. not. But um, this is something that, you know, guys, you heard it here first because I haven't heard anybody you else, know, right. you know, say anything yeah. about it. That's what they You know, do. Francis Scott Key made the Star Spangled Banner. The left will probably try to distort, pervert his legacy any way they can. Right. And they probably will try to rename and the, he was the bridge. Right there in he that was. area. Exactly. Looking where, out over the Looking exact. out and he, where he, when he was right, what inspired him, he right. started writing as he was watching the battle. Yeah. Yeah. In that exact area where the bridge the was, down so, the right, right, yeah. and another so mm -hmm. that's very, very symbolic, and people need to also kind of understand that because we, I think we we forgot, you know, many people forgot God, forgot symbolism that God is speaking to yeah. us. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and yeah. another thing we want to talk about. I mean, we had uh, the clip of uh, Bri President Biden talking about this, ter you know, terrible, um, you know, event, and um, you know, he's already sent. Pete Booty Juice down. He's been here in Baltimore. <laughs> you know, Pete Booty, Booty Juice has been here in Baltimore already. But we did not see the same uh, speed and the same urgency behind what happened uh, in East Palestine. What two years ago? Yeah. You know, yeah. it took uh, it took them uh, it took them a long time to even get down to well, uh, I don't East even Palestine. Know they ever went. they yeah. did. Um, well, first uh, Pete Booty Juice went like three weeks after yeah. the. The, um, the accident occurred, and then Biden went after that. He um, went down there. And so um, we, uh, we do know that the folks in East Palestine, Ohio, were not, mo they were more on the right. Um, so, but now, since this is in Baltimore, and Baltimore is kind of Biden's leftist baby, because, you know, the area is nothing but leftist. Right. Um, you know, he's already sent Pete Booty Juice. 
<laughs> and um, it's weird that he hasn't been yet, though. They're only like an hour away, not even. Not even an right. hour. Right. So he's been making excuses about that. But I find it, you know, to compare the two situations, I mean, you're talking about hundreds of people were affected by the train derailment in mm -hmm. East Palestine, and they didn't get any um, any they, attention, well, any urgency with the three like, weeks. Well, I'm, you know, like, so, you know, sad times bring people together. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it, the Francis Scott Key Bridge had to go down for us to see Quiet C and Fume. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't seen that Negro. When the last time y'all seen wow, Kwa man, Acey? We have not seen Kwa y'all. That is our c congressman. Right. We ain't seen him until he's standing behind Biden. Just the photo op right. of it all. Yeah, the and I said, now look at God. God had to send no. a tragic accident so oh. we can get a, look, a good look at Mr. Infume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to find some way to politicize it. You know, well, welcome, this, sir. After this week, they will go full speed. No, no offense to the barge, but they're going to go full speed ahead to politicize this. Well, welcome, I, Kwai AC. You are more than welcome to come on our show. Yeah. It's so great to see you. Yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> but like we mentioned, you know, I pray that we can unite behind the same patriotic sentiment that Francis Scott, Scott Key, the name of the bridge, had when he wrote the Star Spangled Banner. I, I pray that we let can. One thing I want to let it be let it be known that if these leftists try to rename that bridge when they rebuild it, I will be on the front lines to say absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. that's going to be a war. I mean, when are we going to start fighting? It was a back? war when it was the Star Spangled right. Banner was built. Exactly. Then like, when are we going to start fighting back? Yeah. And like, Republicans need to unite. That that, that bridge represents our dis History. disconnect yeah. as well yeah. right now well yeah. the way it looks right now right right yeah so. well i pray they don't but i mean it's i'm not i would not be surprised if they do not try to rename this bridge mm -hmm. i would not be surprised they, they won't stand for the star spangled banner um they've been you know trying to replace it with uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing. So we'll see, we certainly get, will see. Get ready for your prices to go up on everything. Right, well, I mean, that's another thing. I mean, you know, um, insurance should cover the, repay, the, re, the, the rebuild of the bridge. Um, so it's kind of, I, I didn't understand what Biden was saying that, you know, they're gonna do everything they can and the money, they're gonna send money to rebuild the well, bridge when it's an insurance claim. Well, well no, just supplies. So the supplies, they, so the supplies, oh, they the can't use it. So supply. now, okay. so like yeah. all the supply, everything that yeah. we, we pay for like from medicine to everything, yeah. cars, and it's a fuel. Disaster. They make oh, yeah, yeah. federal areas and stuff. I yeah, mean, so. I do hope that they will eventually recover some money. They should. It's an insurance should, claim. Yeah, they they should, should recover everything. But we, you know, ultimately, insurance. it's us. You know, the po, po folks. That well, it was built. You know, it, it was built. I think for like sixty million dollars. So it's going to be much more oh, to absolutely. repair it. But I mean, mm -hmm. my commute doubled mm -hmm. to work. Mm -hmm. um, it's longer. I have to pay more oh, in gas. Yeah. I mean, it's. Yep. it's it really is affecting yeah. old me. Yeah. It affected me immediately. Yeah. I do want to acknowledge our super chatters tonight. Thank you so much. We have here for our super chatters, Mark. Oh my gosh. Thank Hi, you, Mark. Mark. Thank you. As always, I love my ladies. He says, thank you so much. <laughs> and then I believe we have one more. Cynthia. Cynthia. Oh, Cynthia. Greg, Cynthia. Kelly. Mm -hmm. oh, see. oh, Greg Kelly on the show asked the same question. We need to wait and get all the facts. This is a huge event, a big impact that will affect inflation. Yep. Uh, accident or more, we don't know. Um, we shall see. Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. But MAGA gone MAGA. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Y'all my people out there. All right. So we are moving right along. Um, to the terrorist attack in Moscow. Oh. So we haven't heard too much about this attack uh, in, really... in American oh, media. Um, so Russian President Vladimir Putin said Monday that the gunman who killed 139 people at a suburban Moscow concert hall are radical Islamists, but repeated his accusation that Ukraine could have played a role despite its strong denials. Speaking in a meeting with government officials, Putin said the killings are carried out by extremists whose ideology the Islamic world has been fighting for centuries. Putin, who declared over the weekend that the four attackers were arrested while trying to es escape to Ukraine, said investigators haven't determined who ordered the attack, but that it was necessary to find out why the terrorists, after committing their crime, tried to flee to Ukraine and who was waiting for them there.
We have a video, I'm sorry, a uh, a photo, I should say, of one of this. I mean, oh. <laughs> you know they, what happened to They that. tore him oh, up. No, no, you know, <laughs> no. No, no, what happened? Go ahead. So you know why his ear no. was covered? He has no ear. Yeah, oh. yes, they beat it blew off. No, 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 they, they didn't just off. beat. No, no, no. No, there's an actual oh. video we, that we cannot sh probably show on YouTube. No, they it caught him off. and they said, you know, they're in, so basically they're interrogating them immediately because yeah. they need to know like who is behind <laughs> it, you know, who paid you, all that stuff. So they're asking him and interrogating, and the guy says, the Russian, you know, the, the police or whoever, the FSB, it says, you know, I'm going to cut your ear off and I'm going to feed it to you. Torture. Oh, and basically. he does. Torture. Yeah. Well, they I, did feed it to him. Yeah. Well, okay, look. I didn't know that. I saw that picture. The gangster. And as much as I am, I'm not going to say, I would say, much as I don't agree with Putin and, and Russian politics for the most part, to me, it's not important that they were trying to go to Ukraine. What's important is that they got their asses beat. Yes. And I do hope they get the death penalty. If they are guilty, I hope they get the death penalty. That's what's important to me. Well, I don't care what country they were trying to flee to. That's, a, that's, that's the least of my concern. The concern is that the innocent people um, were blown to pieces, basically. And these guys, these I'm sorry, these pieces of shit, mm -hmm. I hope they do get the shit beat out of them and then get the death penalty. I mean, they yeah. already had not, they, they had all kinds of things done to them at this point. I mean, and they, I, I at this point, women. they are envious of the dead, mm -hmm. these guys. Yeah. And this is how you treat terrorists. Oh, yeah, for sure. Who just murdered exactly like over 100 yeah. and injured exactly. so many people. Three children died. Oh. Yeah. And this was a family event. Yeah. And um, the the one of the upsetting things is, like KJ said, we haven't heard of, about this. No. So yeah. a major terrorist attack in the capital of a, a country, and we don't hear about it yeah. just because it's Russia. Yeah. So I mean, the thing <clears throat> is that what I have to say about Russia and policies in general, even though I'm from there, I don't necessarily support everything that Putin does. I don't, uh, or Russia does. So for example, I don't think that they should be that close with North Korea, for example. Mm -hmm. I don't think they should have Hamas delegation coming into Moscow. Like, absolutely, I don't agree with that. So the same thing with America. I don't agree exactly. with everything that America does. But we have to have humanity when it comes to something like that. And so these are innocent people, and they were uh, targeted by out of all like we almost forgot about ISIS. Like, where did this come from? They're it's still really, there. They haven't really gone anywhere. So my question to you is: is when it happens because that happens often here in the United States. I mean, does Russian media talk about it? Like, I'm, I'm just talk saying about what happened. Like, what I'm saying is, is that's not the nature of Russian and U.S. relationship. You got I'm not saying. I'm not saying that that. Um, I, condolences to all the Russians who died. I, I thought it was horrific, mm. and we all talked about it and covered it because we do right. that in news. Mm. But the nature of Russian and U.S. relations is not, oh my God, we're so sorry for Russia. Mm. Just like when it happens to us, I'm asking, when it happens to us, like in Texas or oh. anything like that, is Russia saying, oh my God, and is it ran on every single news uh, media saying, well, I'm so sorry for the U.S.? If that's not the nature of the so relationship, then we can't really well, expect it depends. that. So it depends on the situation, okay. of course. Okay. So I don't know if you guys know that after 9-11, Russia actually created a, a monument, um, yeah, I'm a, uh, a, a monument that they shipped. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. It, it's you know really big. It's it's built like as a like a teardrop made of steel. Some country, other countries, I think, did and, that. Yeah, yeah. and they yeah. donated it to America. And it was placed in a place that's really away from New York, like in New Jersey, where oh. nobody really knows. And that kind of like you know made me feel a certain way too. Like mm -hmm. it didn't acknowledge. But so, but speaking about what you said and how like maybe we. I know, the, our the policies nature of the are different. Yeah. So, for example, Trump mm -hmm. was fighting ISIS. Mm -hmm. Like, he was really hard on ISIS. Yes. Uh, Putin is really hard on ISIS. Uh, we, as these two countries, that we actually have things in common. Exactly. That, I agree. That we deal I with. agree. Not and everything, so, but yeah. Right. So, and I think it's the, in my opinion, I think it's the deep state, yeah. the globalists, yeah. who actually do not want uh, America to be strong. 
and do not want Russia to be strong. Yeah, I think it's actually tragic. And and um, Vladimir Putin, in his interview a few years back, he said that um, we have deemed Russia our enemies, and he was right. like he he never wanted that. Way. Whether you th whether, right. whether whether you right. agree, I'm not agreeing with him. But I do think that we should have a great relationship with them. We have more values. It's a Christian nation. Like, of course, it's not, you know, I mean, like they're commun well, they were communists or whatever. So policy wise, we disagree. But as far as like, I think we should have a good relationship. But the fact of the matter is we so don't. we were allies in World War II, okay? Yeah, right. The yeah, enemy right. of my enemy is my and, friend. Exactly. So like Russians, I mean like Russians, I say Russia. Like Giannis. <laughs> <laughs> like the Russian, the <laughs> Russian. She's the Russian, y'all. Nah, you're American now. Like you <laughs> when, when we have commonalities on certain values, then yeah, we should. Uh -huh. But they can't even agree in the Security yeah. Council. Um, the, you know, the UN Security Council, the five leaders yeah. of the council, they can't even agree. The U.S. just abstained yeah. from um, that vote, and right. it was like. We just, yeah, we just, we, for whatever reason, we're just at, so I'm not surprised that we didn't, that our, our mainstream media didn't pay more attention to it, but we are paying attention. That's why we need independent media like this. And I love how Putin responded. Like he is a gangster. Those people are struggling over there. Like, I mean, like you said, they wish they were dead oh. because they are getting the snot Look, beat out of them. Be and that's how we need to treat really, our terrorists. And, and you know, besides like those this. guys, yep. so they they caught eleven of them. Those four were the actual shooters, mm -hmm. so they got the the worst of it. But also now they went after their friends, yep. associates, yep. gangster, uh, relatives, everybody. And I mean, yeah, some of them, everybody going to die. Innocent if they are really innocent, but <laughs> but the friends and family. But. Yes, friends, family, <laughs> your mama, your daddy, but, your sister, but your brother. But let me tell you something: <laughs> how you. Russia deals with Islamic terrorists. Terrorism. We had a serious problem with Chechnya. It's mm -hmm. a republic, a Muslim republic within yep. um, within Russia, and there were rebels there. Mm -hmm. They were fighting for independence, and they were sponsored by Western um, Western nations. Nations, mm -hmm. and uh, they were sponsored to in order to weaken Russia. So Russia fought against it. Got rid of all. You know, they went after. Family. Mm -hmm. in, well, and so, hold on, hold on, let me finish. Now, the, there's an army in Chechnya mm -hmm. that fights for Russia. They're the strongest, the most loyal. They're still Muslim. Mm -hmm. They're still, you know, very much believers. <clears throat> but they're saying, you know, we are both God, you know, be fear, God fearing people. We are fighting for the same ideals. So they literally took a, a republic that was hostile and made it the extremely uh, loyal. Like that is- I can't disagree with you. What I was gonna say was, in. Chechnya is like Gaza to Israel. Chechnya mm. used to be right. like to Russia. That's how yeah. like Gaza terrorizes Israel. Then Chechnya mm -hmm. used to more so terrorize. Yeah. I was gonna agree with you on that side. But, but how did they, what I don't understand, the how did they oh, turn them into, so how did they become uh, don't uh, allies? Play with them. Well, so first of all, no, well, no, lots of things. So like, first of all, they went after terrorists like- Yes. Hard. Don't I mean, play with those. First folks. of all, you 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 um, cast fear into everyone, mm. saying if you're you know doing anything against Russia, you know we're gonna come after you. If so, you even think it. If you even exactly. We can see you exactly. Thinking. Second, you know yes, the country, the republic was uh, destroyed uh, because of the war. Russia rebuilt everything beautifully. Mm. Chechnya, the capital of Chechnya, right now is unbelievably beautiful wow. they built church they built mosques they in, you know included their religion they Russianized like, it well i mean I, no i'm just saying i mean they gave them a, a, an ability an incentive to, like to hey have, we got your back as long right. as you got our back like we got to get serious and that's how trump was now, i mean talking serious about ukraine and why they said that you know putin mentioned that they were me they were going into um ukraine now, those Chechens that were they used to fight against Russia during the Chechen War, they are also in Ukraine. Mm. They are. They're fighting on the side of Ukraine. You okay. know this. Mm -hmm. They're called the Ichkeria. They have like a. Different, oh, I did read about yeah. them. Uh, and so they're there. So it's it's not. So what Putin is saying is is true. 
I could see that you know somebody was waiting for them on the other side, mm -hmm. and so it's it's all it's all interconnected. Yeah. Well, we will continue to follow this story, um, mm -hmm. but we wanted to talk about it because, like we said, it's not very it's not talked about uh, a lot on in American media, and so we wanted to talk about it. Um, and uh, Yana, as we yeah. mentioned before, is from Russia, uh, Belarus, so she has a very good grasp on what is going on and can kind of explain it a little bit more so we have a uh, one, I mean, one, one account. Point, I think our two countries have to eventually find common to. ground. Mm -hmm. and We that, were doing that for a while during the Cold War a little bit. After the Soviet, after the Soviet Union, without communism, without in Germany, right. right? I'm saying we were doing that for a little while. I will even admit that we were doing that for a little while. And Russia was trying to build, build I just the bridge. Said that. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm not against so, you. I'm just saying right, I'm right. with you tonight. So, here, you better take it while you can get it. I am. <laughs> so I mean, NATO has to watch out. I mean, that's <laughs> right, right. We still don't agree on the Ukraine, but okay. Once it becomes Russia, it's going to be okay. <laughs> All right. So we are moving right along. Again, um, thank you. We, we love your comments. Please keep them coming. Uh, we will check the comments periodically throughout the show. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. That way you know each time we post new content. All right. So we are moving right along to Tiffany Henry. Oh, messy Lord. Boy. Yes. <laughs> messy wig. Oh, gosh. So I'm not sure we, um, this has been going on for quite a while. Tiffany Henyard, she has been called the most corrupt mayor in America. Uh, she is the mayor of a small town in uh, Illinois. I think it's called Dalton. Dalton. Yeah. Dalton, uh, Dalton County, I believe, Illinois. Take a look at this. This is clip six. This is a mess here. Messy. The grown-up thing would be for her to resign. Just get out of here, leave town. But she's not going to do that. You have disgraced this entire village and also disrespected each and every one of us. Wow. So that was, I believe she was part of the council yes, uh, talking her. about uh, this Tiffany Henyard. I want to play one more clip and then we're going to respond. This is clip number seven. <laughs> Here. And what they say is the misuse of funds. The Board of Trustees has repeatedly asked for financial information uh, that we feel is entitled and has been denied that information. Uh, so we feel that we need to get intervention from somebody that can, uh, can, in, that can force this kind of uh, action. Who are you asking for, for for that intervention? What bodies? Uh, we're asking the FBI, state's attorney, attorney general, and Cook County Sheriff's Office. Henyard became mayor in 2021, and for at least two of the three years, Fox 32 has been reporting on allegations of corruption in her capacity as mayor and Thornton Township supervisor. Concerns have led to trustees calling special meetings to get things done. This meeting is an attempt for um, this legislative board to save Dalton. They voted on items including asking for receipts for the mayor's trips and getting keys to Village Hall. This has been a stain on our community. It's no way that we should be locked out of a place where we pay taxes. Wow. So, Shelly, I mean, <laughs> what are your thoughts? Girl, let me tell you, look, I said, I'm naming this the year of the black woman for all the wrong reasons, right? Let's add Tiffany Henyard to this. Let me tell you this. And listen, listen who else are you talking oh, about? Oh, I said Fanny. Letitia, we got Marilyn Mosby here. We got Tiffany right there. A few others are uh, London Breed somewhere, wherever she is, San Francisco. Muriel Bowles are down here in D.C. All of these black women have torn up everywhere they've gone. No. They have come through just like a storm and torn up everything. Y'all keep voting for people who look good. And, and you know what? Another thing, all of them are illiterate. Some of them are illiterate. Especially Tiffany, her. You, if you hear her speak, you hear Fanny speak talking about, yeah, I got the illiterate. Y'all keep voting paid people on voting people into office because they look cute and all this stuff and your communities are being destroyed left and right. This wench here, Oh, she is raunchy. She is ratchet. She probably has Marilyn Mosby beat because guess what? Whatever she's doing, Marilyn tried to hide hers. Tiffany ain't hiding it, and y'all did it. Y'all voted for this mess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's it, the black girl magic. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, so first of all, I want to point out. Did y'all notice the color of skin of all the people 
that were complaining about yes. her. Like, this is what happens. They oppress their own people. Like, these are the type of people that, like, they are the, to me, they the worst kind of evil. Mm -hmm. And her in particular, like, did you see that she was paying for security detail for her cars and all of that, you guys? And the, the um, state the, troopers... The the state troopers and the police cars were getting repossessed. Yes. <laughs> like, she hadn't paid contractors. She hadn't paid anybody. And all they were doing were coming to her and, like, asking her. And she was like, y'all black. Y'all not supposed to be asking me nothing. And so then her, she goes on Roland Martin. Yes. She goes on Roland <laughs> Martin, y'all. So this is Roland. Did, see, Roland, he <laughs> hasn't figured out that these black people are going to get his credibility. He worried about our black car getting stolen. Yes. Negro, your investigative journalist credibility is going to be shot when you keep messing with these people. She interviewed her yes. and she lied the entire time. And then he gets killed in the comments yes. about it. And then he tries and to, then he tries to say, oh, I did that on purpose. <laughs> like, y'all, the black car, the black road, it's a dead end. It's a dead end. Yeah, I mean... You just uh, you know what it is. It's a dead end. It's, I mean, go ahead, y'all. What is it? You know, I'm pretty <laughs> sure these black women, they are thinking these are reparations. Oh, oh yeah. So like I really think, like you know, when they get into their position of power, they're like, you know what? Yeah. I deserve this because my ancestors and so and so, yep. you know, they suffered. And so, you know what? I deserve all this. Totally. And uh, I need, you know, there's nothing wrong with it because, you know, it's reparations for my ancestors. Yep. Well, why wouldn't they say that? Exactly. I mean, we see this is being perpetrated, uh, or I should say, per uh, yeah, per yeah, perpetrated right. by the uh, left, by the black community. You know, we are no longer hiring uh, and, and putting people in leadership because of their skill set, um, because of their moral uh, capacity. We are putting them in strictly because of the color of their skin, because of, use, like you said, retribution. Uh, and, and so this is what happens. We get people who are morally defunct, people who cannot do their jobs to the you know a, a good standing mm -hmm. and 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 they're ruining our communities left and right and yeah. this is what we've been saying we care. can this is not the way to to run america this is not mm -hmm. the way to run our communities nope. you cannot just pick people just because <laughs> they are saying one you're going to get free stuff <gasps> and number two because pick me because i'm black and, and i'm going to take care of you because you're black and what's oh. interesting the free stuff that they claim that they're getting or giving is coming <laughs> from <laughs> us right. she not, it's not her money <laughs> she's um she is corrupting and bankrupting the town of dalton yeah. these people and they're senior citizens mostly on that yes. video right so they're retired all their taxes it's, it, i'm laughing because it's you have to laugh to keep them crying for one thing. But I don't understand for the life of me. These people voted her in. She's young. She's ignorant. She's immature. She's illiterate. She's ghetto, ghetto. as we would say. She's ratchet. She is rank. She just is. She's she's a complete mess. And she they voted for her. And now they are getting what is it? The chickens have come home to roost. Yeah. That chicken is squawk squawk. Yeah, well, y'all uh, haven't learned yet. I mean, seriously, black folks, y'all have not learned yet and it's so funny because we know these people we know the tiffany daltons we work with them but they, they got our black card yeah taken. they got bad attitudes they're unethical <laughs> like they are very selfish and narcissistic we know them and then when they somehow put on a like a facade and say oh yeah i'm gonna come help you you should already know let me tell you something i am skeptical of every single black person that come around me that say yeah i'm gonna vote and i'm gonna give you something because first of all exactly. i don't need you to give me nothing and i know you ain't giving me nothing right. so i know you lying all right exactly. y'all need to take exactly. heed. yeah well and, and we have the same thing going on here in baltimore i mean so right now uh our mayor mayor scott brandon scott um he had <laughs> uh, abysmal poll numbers he's been awful he's very left he's leftist mayor here uh he's all about retribution uh, retribution mm -hmm. uh and restorative justice right. and you know black this black that but now he's gotten this national attention from this uh, terrible, terrible accident, this Francis Scott Key Bridge uh, uh, collapse. And I hope people are not 
here going to now all of a sudden mm -hmm. vote Forget for him. All the, right. yeah. Because he, you know, he's walking around here, he's getting national coverage, but I mean, crime is skyrocketed. He is very soft on crime. He is very soft on youth and, uh, and, and you know, he's just, he's an awful, awful mayor. He, I look, we've been living here long enough to know. I, I, I have no illusions that this tragedy of the bridge collapsing is going to make people not vote for Brandon Scott. No, I, in fact, I think, unfortunately, they're going to be more endeared to him. He's going to have his little smooth talk or whatever. And I think, at least in the near future, his numbers are going to go up. Mm -hmm. So he's in a competitive race with uh, Sheila Dixon. But unfortunately, I don't hold out hope for anybody voting differently, if not even more so, for Brandon Scott, unfortunately. But because unfortunately, people are emotional. Emotional yeah. voters. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. They're not listening to reason. Mm -hmm. nope. They're listening, no. you know, someone is speaking to their emotions. And when yeah. it comes to black people, unfortunately, if someone uh, says, oh, it's, you know, we, we deserve something or there's retribution, yeah. there's um, social justice, all these buzzwords, you know, they just have to say it and people feel like, oh, this is the yeah, person exactly. who, ca who exactly. cares. And yeah. we need to learn. Like, I'm telling, like, I, it's a red flag. You start saying exactly. all this kind of black and brown communities, minority communities, I head for the hills. I am not interested at because all. Because it's racist. Yeah. And, and it's communist. It's, yeah. it's, it's communist. It's communist. And the, and the, pendulum, the pendulum will swing. I mean, if you can't substitute these words that they use for the direct opposite, so they're talking about black and brown people, was it okay if they said white people? Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it makes no sense. You should be helping people or you should be leading communities based on what's best for this yeah. community, not based on the skin color of the community. We're it's just Americans. as simple as give that. We're all free. Americans. We're that, all Americans. Yes. Give us free. You right. don't need to give us free. We're free. Thank you that God gave us that according to our constitution and our declaration of independence. We are all Americans. We are all Marylanders. We are all Baltimoreans. Yep. Like, like, cut it out. It's, yeah. It's phony. And yeah. Fake. And just do your job. Do your job. No matter the color of the skin <laughs> of the community, if you do your job, there will be no issues. Yes. Exactly. No issues whatsoever. You, you, so if you're mayor, you're supposed to be taking care of cleaning the streets. You're supposed to take care of making the crime, just making sure we're protected. Right. You know, the police force is stacked. <laughs> Uh, the education system is, is up to par. It does not matter the color of the skin of the community. Just do your yeah. job. And if he does, if he does that, if he if they do that, businesses will come. Yes. People will have jobs, better jobs, more pay. The area will be competitive. And black housing, people. right? And <laughs> housing you because you know all that. Black people want safety for their children and their yes. families too, right? All of that will come into place. But that takes leadership. It takes integrity, and they don't want to give that up. They don't want they. They don't have that and they don't want to give up that leverage because then they won't have power if they do that. The people will. And people oh, will so lose true. their positions. They're communists. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they don't want to lose their nonprofits and their all exactly. these organizations that supposedly helping exactly. people, but they're not really helping people. They're just grabbing money for themselves. Exactly. Yeah. And all these administrators in the schools that just grabbing money for themselves and not fixing anything yeah. because yeah. they're communists. Marxists and exactly. they don't believe in the real Amer American dream. And half of these nonprofits you hear about, you know, especially that. here in Baltimore City, where the mayor, every other word <laughs> is trauma, <laughs> trauma, trauma, trauma. <laughs> so they they try to push these uh, trauma victims and the trauma people on these nonprofits, and half of them or most of them are led by their cronies. Oh, exactly. So it's just a system of them pushing people into these organizations, into these nonprofits that are led by their crony so they can get paid exactly. and then again they it all comes back around same thing the biden's have been doing exactly yeah there's no such thing as non-profit it's you. all for Thank profit like you. all those places the goodwill the v the um veterans uh whatever like the like yeah all of that stuff is for okay. profit well you know what i don't mind that i really don't mind it but long as you're doing your job it's, and it's right, not I right that these organizations some of these organizations or most of them have ends within government. You know why? The reason the why it doesn't Grants. work, right. it doesn't work because communism doesn't work. Mm. Exactly. So if you have something, so when you have a nonprofit, that means you're receiving money no matter what. Yes. Whether you're doing the job, whether you are selling the product or selling the services, whether you have clients 
or don't have clients. Well, you you know whether you have success with your clients that if you're helping someone or not, you're still receiving the money. Well, it doesn't so. it doesn't work because if they fix the problem, then they, would there would be no it, need it, it for them. Yeah, like it's kind of like you remember exactly. the LGBTQ uh, <laughs> like whole nonprofit, and their whole goal was to get marriage. For, like LGBT right. marital <laughs> rights, they're, they're and now right. and now that goal they, it's it's done, right? They should go away. They don't they need don't to. Hey, you more. achieved it. Right. Yes. There's a distinction between <laughs> now. There are now some private trans. foundations, right? There's some private foundations and private nonprofits. Those people put their own money up, mm -hmm. right? Yes. The problem is the public nonprofits, if you will, that are run off of grants. No. Uh, Where are the grants? Okay. People, hear, people hear grants and they're like, oh, that's free money. No, no it's, it's your, your money. money. It's your money at federal, state, local level. That's where the money's coming from. It's all taxpayer money. If it's a private foundation, fine. You can donate your private money. They have their money, their family money. That's fine. That's what they choose to do with their money. Be, have at it. But when you hear all these other ideas, don't let Grant give you an orgasm. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> you know what? You, make, you hear the word Grant, don't get an orgasm You should by be it. scared. Yeah, because yeah. You and, really, you make an, and you're talking yeah. the truth because a lot of the uh, nonprofits that I'm talking about, they are exactly. given grants by the city. Exactly. And, and these grants assistant. are going to these the leadership exactly. in these nonprofits exactly. are cronies exactly. that are uh, uh, when you uh, connected the with grant, the city. Laundry. When you hear the word grant, 99% of the time, you are getting fucked. Oh, yeah. But you ain't having having an orgasm. <laughs> but you, there's no need, like, I mean, we have the whole, you know, home, like the homeless organization. Like, if they solved homelessness, okay, <laughs> yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. Jo it would lose their jobs. So ah! it's not in their interest. Y'all, don't. <laughs> yes, if okay. they fixed homelessness, if they fix drug, you know, um, if the drug problem, then they would have no jobs. If they so they're not gonna fix it. Trauma, yeah. so they just keep re trauma. Exactly, right. It's a vicious cycle. Yeah. Right, right. Let's and not fix the crime problem because then there's going to be fewer tra yeah. traumatized people, and then our trauma center is going to exactly. collapse. Right. So right, and see, and, and and then we can connect the dots. And I don't want to uh, change change um, the, the, no, the, no, the no, change topic yeah, topic, but the this goes back. To, this goes back to the Bidens. So the Bidens are being funded by China. China is bringing over fentanyl, which, as I mentioned early, is the number one killer between, of, of people 18 to 49 years old. Then what do the Bidens do? They open the borders. The borders are wide open to create illegal immigration. So then China's fentanyl can come over the border and infect Americans and the Biden, then they pay the Bidens, they funnel this money to the Bidens, so the cycle continues over and over again. Not only is Biden getting paid, Hunter, yep. his brother, exactly. his daughter, all of them are getting paid and they're cronies for China and this is why it's important to get them out of, of, of office. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's, yeah, it's, it's, I'm it's, telling you, it's it's a it's a hustle. It's a it's a hustle, a, right? It's, it's a hustle. A, it's a big hustle. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, um, that was uh, we were just talking about Tiffany uh, Hayneard, Hayneard, uh, Hayneard. Okay, ghetto girl. Yeah, Tiffany Hayneard got them hemmed up. Nails, yeah. nails, car, nails. like clothes, like she is a she's yeah, nasty. yeah, and the baby hairs. <laughs> Uh, she do got the baby hair. <laughs> the baby hair. Ghetto baby hair. All right. Um, so we are moving right along to um, the next topic we want to talk about is rape culture. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something I wanted to talk about um, coming from the idea of what's going on, what happened, I should say, on October 7th. So uh, we know recently uh, Congressman Jamal Bowman came out and basically uh, said that he, uh, he did not believe that the victims on October 7th were raped by Hamas. Um, but it has come out evidence that they were indeed raped. There was, he says here, there was propaganda used in the beginning of the siege. There's still no evidence of beheaded babies or raped women but they still keep using that lie for propaganda, Bowman said. This was on November 17th. Uh, but recently, political, um, this is what political said, but recently the UN confirmed that Hamas did commit rape and sexual violence, a reprehensible act that I condemn entirely. So now he's condemning it. Um, again, the United Nations came out and said there are reasonable grounds to believe that multiple incidents of sexual violence took place with victims being subjected to rape and or gang rape 
and then killed or killed while being raped. So I wanted to talk about that as far as this idea of rape uh, in this rape culture now. So we had this sex positive culture pushed on the left where non-monogamous sex is encouraged at all ages. So then how do we talk about rape? Um, and I want to start with you, Shelley, on this, uh, you know, feminism's, uh, feminist project, pro feminist project has been de-sex and demystify the female body and above all to escape and deny a woman's unique gift, the creation of new life. And it has succeeded, but its success comes at the expense of all previous understandings of the sanctity of a woman's body. So then rape becomes just another form of resistance and a young woman or young women are left with no way to understand themselves or their bodies. I think we talk about rape or rape culture, sex. We talk about it truthfully mm -hmm. to our children. I think there's, there's two, rape is rape, which is criminal, which is evil, which is wrong. And then there is sex, right? Rape is actually a type of sex. It's a distorted, perverted version of sex, but I think we need to talk about sex, the true, uh, the truth about sex to our children. We can tell them, we can take the mystery out of it for them. I, I, there's been a lot of criticism over the years for, I would say, Christians or religious communities that we, you know, we want to, we want to make sex this taboo, and and so our children like, become more curious about it. I think we need to put that in the proper context for them when they are growing up. Rape is wrong. Period. It's wrong. If it happens to a child, I think it's even that much more evil, but certainly it's wrong across the board. Rape is force, fraud, or coercion, that, and that can lead into human trafficking. But we have to stop. We have to, I'm going to say, take back, right? We have to take back the night because there's this movement you know, with rape, whatever. Take back the night. I'm talking about us on the right. Take back the night. Make sex. Don't make it this evil or this taboo thing. Tell them the truth about sex. There are pros and cons to it, particularly if you're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to tell our children, the truth. And unfortunately, I've said this before on other topics, unfortunately, today, we have to tell our children that when they're younger and younger because they're going to be exposed to it in a perverted way when they go out the door. Let me ask you, Crystal, because when sex and virginity are stripped of their significance and every sexual kink is permitted mm -hmm. so long as consent is given, then the traditional understanding that rape is a uniquely dreadful and heinous crime collapses, doesn't it? Yeah. And and I mean, it's it's it, we're a godless society, but more importantly, we are a society of weak men. Mm. The people who are um, committing these acts are men who are, who are, they don't have a lot of access to sex. They watch a lot of pornographic material where um, it's kind of celebrated to pull her hair and do all, all this, you know, kinkiness and not celebrate in, in a monogamous relationship. But I think that all of this rape culture and all, all of the the, um, the dangers of women, it has everything to do with the weakness in men. Like I remember, and you, you guys know, this is my boy, Andrew Tate, he said um, in Romania, he was riding, Romania is a Christian nation, and he's, he was riding and there was girls walking in the middle of the night. And he was like, young girls walk in the middle of the night in Romania? And the guy was like, why, why wouldn't they? They're Romanian girls. No one would ever hurt a Romanian girl. And so it's, it's more so to me that men have lost their um, role of protector and um, their role of keep it, keep, keeping the sanctity of um, a, woman's, a woman's body um, as like sacred and not wanting to hurt her or harm her. And then this is, I mean, this is what you get. You get a society of weak men. Women are not safe, neither are their bodies. It's just the truth. Yeah, what are your thoughts on this, Yana? I mean, we have a situation where, um, you know, again, rape is, you know, sexual intercourse without consent. Yeah. But we then, but we also have kind of uh, created a culture where the sacredness of sex in a woman's body <laughs> is devalued. Uh, in so far as it's a it, 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 rape is a violation of consent, but how can you distinguish now? Right. I mean, mm -hmm. from any other form of I mean, violence. Feminists are very 
contradicting. Mm -hmm. So on one hand, they said, let's liberate the woman. Mm -hmm. um, and so then the woman became liberated. And so then she's now exposed mm -hmm. to all this violence. So they were trying to protect the woman from something like from violence in the family <clears throat> or something or from being being married off to you know a guy that she didn't want and so but on the on the opposite the flip side of that now women are completely exposed they're sent off you know girls are sent off to college god knows where where they you know are exposed to to rape culture where they can get you know mm -hmm. uh drunk and drugged and horrible things can happen to them and so and we look at it like it's normal like it's okay to send off a 17 year old girl and just say yeah be on your own you know live on your own you know hang out sleep with god with wh whoever until you you know you find the the right guy like no that culture doesn't work right because then that same girl will eventually get hurt mm -hmm. even without her realizing at first that she's being hurt that she's being violated so i mean that whole promiscuity culture it basically breeds breeds rape culture now to respond to the fact that some people don't believe that hamas was uh yeah, yeah. raping and that is i heard that and it's yeah. like first of all there are there's video evidence that you would not see on regular youtube that exists uh, about that of that stuff <clears throat> actually happening and then, of course, the terrorists are going to lie, and the Islamists are going going to lie that no, we didn't, we, we didn't do we didn't do all that. Yeah, come on, if you can shoot, it's a part at, of war. If you can yeah. shoot at a person, it's a part of war. I mean, come and like everyone knows, like they even there's all sorts of evidence, and the fact that the left will 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 side with Hamas. Like, those people are delusional. Rape is actually a war, a war crime when it right, happens. Yeah, right. war. It really is. And, I'm not saying and, it doesn't happen. <laughs> not, not saying, we are naive to no, think that I they're not raping them women. Was, I didn't say it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But when it does, it is considered a war crime. I agree, and it so, should but, be. But one thing one thing is that um, we talk about rape culture now, and I'm not denying that that takes place, but... There is rape is as old as the Bible, if yeah. not before, because it was codified in the Bible. Yeah. Um, literally within a family, right? A brother raped his sister. Yeah. So that's one of the first instances of rape that was written, codified in the Bible. So that's not codified. I wouldn't say codified. codified I think it was mean, no codified, codified meaning that it was put together in written form. Oh, it was oh, yeah. it was outside. It was beyond the oral. Well, actually, oral there is something in the Bible about rape, and I'm that, not saying it's not wrong. No, no I, I know. Oh. And actually, there was what was it? Sema or, or D Dina? There was uh, an Old Testament. Yeah, it's an Old Testament. And there's a girl gets a girl gets raped and Tamar and yeah. Tamar and David and not, her right. her family kills the entire um, that's, tribe. Yes, that's Tamar. Of people who I agree. Who, yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, raped I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. in, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, it's not. But new. we again, our, we were talking about this earlier. Our society, the guardrails that we should have, have long been, at least certainly in this this age, this modern age, are no longer there. So that's why I say, unfortunately, we have to, we have to, on the right, if you will, we have to teach and instruct our children about these things earlier than they normally would maybe when we were growing up or when our parents or grandparents were growing up. We have to at least, I say instruct. I didn't say go out there and tell them to go have sex or whatever. I said, but we have to instruct and, and quote unquote, we have to expose them to the truth about topics that maybe they would normally get at a little bit later in life. Well, I want to yeah, talk about that. Let's we'll talk about the guardrails yeah. because yeah. we're talking about DeSantis. I mean, talking about a guardrail. So DeSantis just signed legislation in Florida that prohibits people under 14 years of age from having social media accounts, regardless of parental assent, consent. Uh, it's due to go into effect January 1st. He signed it today. The law requires social media companies to close accounts believed to be used by minors under that age, cancel accounts of minors 14 or 15 years old at the request of the minor or parents, and delete all information from the accounts. Minors who are 14 or 15 years old can obtain a social media account with parental consent. Mm -hmm. So I want to get you guys' thoughts on that. Did he go too far, or so, is this something you think is good, good to do? I'm, I, I was a little confused of how this is going to work, because you have to get parental consent or parental request, or the child can request to have it canceled. I didn't understand, again, how... 
how it's working even out. even with parental consent, if you are a child. Well, he just said you can with parental yeah, yeah. consent. You can no, 14 or 15. Like over 14. So at, below 14 is a no. Is that what no, you're saying? No, period. So yeah. again, I said social guardrails. I think a parents need to do that. I totally understand why he's, I understand as a parent, as you know, as a responsible person, I totally understand why. I still going to still go back to my number one, as the government gets bigger. Yes. Get mm -hmm. Preach. Yeah. Preach. But well, what's the difference in this and not say social, like, uh, social mores are little, basically from the community, from the family, mm -hmm. not government no, 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 ordained no. or government. I was saying, what's the difference yeah. between, for instance, you know, uh, teenagers or you know 14 15 year olds are unable to drink but but, uh, but there are situations or where drive. all right or drive yeah. but for instance for drinking but you know if a parent is there and they say oh you know what it's christmas you can have a glass of wine they are you know it's parental yeah. so there's the law the government does say you cannot drink under at a certain age what's the difference because between when, this and social media in that case when children young people whatever you're drinking no inhib inhibitions not only is it is there a social faction to that there's also a biological faction i'm not saying they're going to be drunk overnight but they're also going out into the public where they're putting not only themselves at risk, but other people at risk. Well, I'm not talking about driving. I'm talking about no, I'm saying even with, yeah. the, with, the, with drinking, while well, your inhibitions are down. Right. So then they might get in the car and drive or with no license, things like that. So there, again, there is a place, particularly when the public is at danger. Mm -hmm. There's government supposed to protect our borders. Well, you, have you like looked that. at the numbers for social media, the data well, behind where are the it? Depression I'm is up where the for parents. social. Well, same thing with drinking and things, but the, the, uh, social media has led to an increase in yeah. depression, an increase suicide. in bullying, an increase in suicide, drug abuse. Then we're not even talking about the idea that, you know, with the social media and with uh, the, in, the, the um, way that it's the algorithms and things mm -hmm. are leading to um, this incorrect information. You know, the left uses it to push, uh, you know, different things on social media. I mean, the the numbers and the data behind this are yeah. astronomical. When it's a public bigger, health uh, concern. When the government gets point. bigger, the people get. Smaller. I agree there. And yeah. so, when the more rights we give and think that the government is supposed to mandate, then that gives up more of our parental rights. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Again, but isn't this, but you wouldn't say though that this is a situation where, um, Sometimes government does have to keep up with technology. So many, like so, like, as we said, oh, government computers. Well, no, I'm not yeah. talking about that. But oh. I'm talking about as we mentioned. You know, you have the situation where you know social media was not around, nor I was it, it you know there. many years ago. And so with it being around now, there are certain things that are just brand new, different it. things. Oh, that so, so, so teenage, may I finish? So do, government so computers. So do yeah. teenage, teenagers need additional, like you mentioned, guardrails to protect. Guardrails, not necessarily. No government rail. Yeah, Ban it in the whole country for all young people. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, she's ban from Russia, y'all. Ban <laughs> it. You said you want to move there. It's yeah. absolutely detrimental to when did I say that? And I don't you care what you guys that, say about I said that I wanted right, to right, move to Russia. Y'all, 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 I did not say that. I think she did. I did not say I wanted to move to Russia. I said, Absolutely. we think that our country is better than Russia, and that oh, may not necessarily the be the case. Show, in the yes, you did. Y'all gonna have to find <laughs> it to show me. I have <laughs> never yes, said that I want to move to Russia. I have never said that I wanted to move to Russia. I've never said that. I'll show you say. where to go where you can find it. Because I was saying something about, about, we were talking about America. I was like, you know, America, why would you move there? Y'all, yes, no, I'm so glad we got things on record. Uh -uh, I want us to find the video that I said that I wanted to move to Russia. Anyway, okay. right, what I will say is, is that government gets big. I like government got enough to do. Like Ron, and they don't. You don't they have enough to do. to do. Exactly. You don't have enough to do. And I agree. Like I do not agree with kids being on social media. I understand that there is um, a lot of suicide, a lot of problems, bullying, self-esteem issues. That's why you know I told my son he can't you know have Instagram or a lot anything like that. But it's just like. Y'all just want to be there. Preventing parents. harm to minors mm. from social media is responsible it's governance. It's responsible of your parents. It's media. It's and conservative media governance. So here's the thing. So here's the thing. 
Um, Pat Bet David actually said that he has social media for his child. He manages it completely, and he has it because his child is in media. His child um, does sports. His child. So you are blocking a parent's ability to be to, a parent. To be a parent. Well, so for I mean, if your child sucks and is following people on Instagram and TikTok and trying to worry about why her boobs are not, that's your conversation to have with them. But, but you just some legit. That's not what you're talking about, though. There are some legit parents that have aspirations and things that they want to do with their kids, whether it be sports, whether it be entertainment or anything. Well, that's and fine. That's, I'm, that's not something that, this is not covering. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. No, it's it's saying they can't handle it just, No, no, it so, didn't. It's, Brian, if you look into the, I'm sorry, I'll have you, you're next, John. If you look into the, um, the uh, legislation, you just said Pat was running his child's social media. And that he is said it's going away. No, he, that's he not. He said it, that. It's not going away. And there are a lot of misinformation about okay, the legislation. You might be right. But if he's running his child's social media, that is fine. He can do that. You can have a page for your six month old if you want to put all your business out there, or your two month old, whatever. But it, you just, it's just saying your child cannot do be on social media running it. How that's is the what government going to prevent that? He's going to go in your phone. Ron, you got better stuff to do. But how about so you Depre conservative child, child depression is not is, is something I, I, I believe. Be, that, I'm sorry, need Yana, to be careful. I'm, right, I'm Conservatives need to be careful <laughs> about supporting big government just because we agree with the policy. It's, it's still not, big government. It's responsible I'm just saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying every going to stop the careful. child from, oh, well, your child, I see your child oh, on social I know. media. I know how they're going to do it. <laughs> they're going to put the cameras yes! in the house. That's coming next. No. That's coming it's, First like, of all, it's, <laughs> it's actually a way to pro, um, to protect uh, the government, too. How? Because if it's not work, what do you mean? Because if, for, for, uh, for instance, for bullying. So if you have if there's a bullying issue going on. They can't even a, protect bullying in school. In person. You were heard about on social media. They can certainly do that. There is a huge issue right now with bullying in school. Bullying on, online bullying for children. So if a situation comes up where there is a, a situation where a child is bullying another child, mm -hmm. this go, falls back on the parents. So you should, the, the child should not, if they're at a certain age, they should not even have a social media account. Parents decide that. Casey, get but to this, man. This, they should be able to shut it down instantly and, and take care of it. What were you going to so, say, Yana? I mean, I, I already forgot what I was supposed I'm to sorry. say. But no, I, I'm sorry. Parents are not very smart. So, that's I mean, true. That's they're true. not. Yeah, see. And so majority of human beings are not very smart. That is just a fact of life. That's true. So sometimes there are people in the authority figure, like the the government, they have to do certain things. Like for example, sorry, with drinking, America. with uh, drinking laws, with the driving laws, with I mean, protection. With, kids cannot buy a gun, for example. I mean, even if the the parent says, well, you know, he knows how to use it and he's very responsible, no. There are certain things, and you know what? I'm sorry, I have to say there are certain guardrails that need to happen, and people right now, they don't realize how bad it has become with children. Children are not okay. They're not okay these days. And they, you think the government knows best? Government's I, a great dad. I think that some things we have to some allow. Some things, garbage, I agree yes, with that garbage. That's you think what the government knows best? So, in some cases, hey, but, yes. Okay, why, so, does, this make the, example, why does this make the difference? In, you serve a parental Hold authority. on. In Florida, if people voted for this uh, governor, he is representing oh. the people. So, for example, if I agree with my representatives, I want them to be more strict on something mm -hmm. like this, I'm perfectly fine I got with it, that. but I want to ask you a question. And again, I want to ask, so if government, I agree, there are some guardrails that are needed. I just don't think they need to usurp parental authority. That's number one. So then why don't we just go and say, well, some governments say that your kids can transition. How come government doesn't know best then? They have, they because, have it, like I said, it, I mean, I'm just, no, the people I'm, of Florida obviously voted for this. Conservative. So what? People, we just said people in Baltimore vote for foolish stuff to do. Okay. That doesn't mean they know that's, so, that was a good thing. But, okay, so in my opinion, okay, there we go. since I'm, okay, a, I'm, a, I'm a voter as well, in your, your and opinion. in my opinion, if there's a, a representative who is saying, you know what, social media is bad for children, and we should limit the, the it. Data Dad, it. The data supports it. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> 
Thanks, Dad. Y'all have plenty to do. Worry about your border. Right. Worry about the, the economy. He's doing a great job with the schools. He's doing all. I love what he did with the unions. Those are all things that you're giving power back to the, the um, individual. So when you're saying, hey, teachers don't are not forced to um, go to DEI training or teachers are not forced to join union, you're giving power back so, to the individual. Okay. I and don't and need I your help exactly. raising my child. Thank you. So, for example, they said that teachers should not teach gender theory in, mm -hmm. in Florida, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I work in education. It is very hard to teach something to the kid when they go on social media and get a totally opposite message. And that message is way stronger than I'm one mm -hmm. conservative teacher out of a million voices that they hear then on social media. And then they come back and they literally argue all day long about this issue. Yeah, I'm so telling you. It's the same thing. The it's the you same need help. Like, what, what do you don't do? even... I realize they, don't know, they don't realize it. what they're looking at. What they're okay, looking at. Okay, parents are stupid. And okay, they, I mean, yeah, parents it's are stupid. It's the same stupid. thing as movies. Look at parents movies. Are there is a restriction. Parents are not there. And Even instead of they... fixing that problem, government is a better parent. Well, of course, well, well, what? It's that it's has worked. That has to work it's all the time. It's the same it. thing with movies. I mean, there's a restriction on what your children can see in and movie has theaters. And that stopped them from doing it. <laughs> Well, it's still, it has actually. It has. It, I, it, it we weren't me. around for those it's laws, is what I mean. It's certain it uh, criteria. Me. It actually lets the parents know you know what? Maybe I, would, I should watch this thing first and then decide whether I should show it to my kid. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. Dad. Thanks for letting us know. Big Thanks daddy, for instruction. Big Daddy G. Like I said, you we call, were You call the, Trump we Daddy call anyway. Him. Oh, yeah. So what are you talking about? Uh, yeah. You always say you, Daddy's home. What are you talking daddy's about? You should be home, right at meaning home he's going to protect his You call citizens. Trump Daddy Not my all, child. You call him Daddy. <laughs> yes, because so, he's going to protect his citizens. And this is a protection of Maybe children. he's going to protect... I don't need nobody protection of children. I can protect my children. If government did what they were supposed to do, then it would parents wouldn't have to be pulled in so many exactly. different ways exactly. so they can focus on exactly. raising their children. But now that government doesn't do much of what it's supposed to do, parents are like this and don't know whether they're coming or going. Well, so what in particular are you talking about? Something the government doesn't the border, do. The they need the taxes. To, well, how maybe that, if we didn't have to have I, two incomes in a household, maybe, maybe if they if did they trade on the, the, school, the public schools in particular, yes. get, get rid of all of the, the stuff that's not teaching or not educational and focus on really reading, writing, arithmetic, parents wouldn't have to be so overwhelmed well, He's doing that already. Empower, empower the he teachers. Just, he just said that he's getting gotten rid of no, gender. They, they focus gender. on that and doing that well. Not yeah, he's doing that's what I said. He did a good job. Yeah. yeah, if you so empower the, the teachers. The government is not doing it. The federal government is not doing it. This is at a state level in his state. Care. But you mentioned something about if the government was doing it. He's already, he yeah, already so what they getting need. rid of gender saying, ideology in school. Focus on what they need to do. I'm just saying, collective. Focus on what they need to do. Yes. Then parents wouldn't be pulled away. I'm not, and again, I'm not excusing that. I'm just saying there are so many things that compete for the time yes. of children and parents. And we have to worry about X amount of things because our government doesn't do what it's supposed to do. I agree. I agree I there. Agree. But if we're talking about, I mean, we're not talking about the federal government. We're talking about I'm state talking government. About the state state government. Well, I'm talking about in particular. Uh, to, well, I'm talking right. about in the particular I mean, to this, we have this story. kids who can barely read and parents don't even realize it. And you think that parents are going to be yeah really on top of what's going on in social media. And you think they're going to do better? The, government the government's going to be on top we of We got to do something about it. Exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah. And it's the government's responsibility to, to protect. protect. That protect is one thing the they border. are protect supposed the to do. They are supposed the to protect us safety. They're supposed to protect us in things like this. And so they again, there's no uh, difference in this in a movie yeah, or saying the, the kids can't drink or allowed. things. OK, go ahead. I'm sorry, what were you saying? OK, they're going to my drink. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. It's no difference in between this and the government. You know, in the, we, you can't see a, a R-rated movie. Your kid can't smoke. Your kid can't drink. Yeah, this is difference. conservative it's governments, in, in my opinion. It's just in my opinion. And, and the government has not been able to prevent any of those things. Not one so, well, pass maybe all the laws yeah. you want. Hey, Ron, I'm not a hater. Pass all the laws you want. So all the kids, now my kids know how to do, Mommy, what's your date of birth? <laughs> and then they just scroll and they put in the date of birth so they can get into the app. I mean, like, government has not figured out what their job is. But hey, 
Spend a whole three, four, five weeks implementing this on your taxpayers' dollars and feel like you did it's something. One, it's one of those feel good powers. Exactly. That's basically what feel it is. Feel like you did something. <laughs> All right. So we are going to continue to follow that. I mean, it still may not be able to be implemented in court. So the courts okay. are probably going to have a say in this and um, to see if it is even uh, constitutional. So we'll continue to follow this story. All right, guys, we are at the end of our time tonight. Oh Thank you so much yes. for watching. Any final words? <laughs> I'll start with you, uh, Crystal. Oh, God, you guys, yeah, like, this is Holy Week. I'm so grateful to God for um, our whole faith is built off of um, Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. I want to focus on that, highlight that, no shade, um, but let's make it all about Jesus this week, and I will see you next week. All right, Yana, <laughs> any final thoughts? <laughs> I mean, it's tough. It's been a, a tough yeah, week. Yeah. So I'm, I really, I hope everyone goes through this as smoothly as possible. And just my thoughts and prayers for anyone who's been affected by our bridge uh, disaster. And we need to come together. We have to have less of these arguments and be stronger together. Mm -hmm. All right, Shelly, any final thoughts? I'm going to repeat. I'm going to sound like a, a parrot here. Stay strapped. <laughs> get education. Our country's under attack. Be aware and prepare. And don't give up your freedoms under the guise of safety and security. Yep. Because I think it was Ben Franklin who said, when you give those up, you deserve neither. Yep. I'm paraphrasing. But thanks a lot. Absolutely. All right. Um, same kind of sentiment. Um, definitely this is uh, the final week uh, of Christ from uh, Palm Sunday oh, to yeah. the time where he resurrected. And so certainly um, mind is on uh, Christ, on Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, my always my um, my 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 passion, uh, my uh, focus is on children. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the safety, uh, the sanctity of children. And so right now we are living in a time in a country where um, that is the last thing on most mm -hmm. people's minds. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely keep them to the forefront. They are our future mm -hmm. and to be aware and prepare. So as we that's our mantra for 2024, um, be aware and prepare. We're waking the lions, no longer looking at the sheep. Uh, we are wake, waking the lions. We have um, definitely merchandise um, for you guys. So if you're interested in purchasing anything from our store, you can definitely go to our website at www.popandpoliticslive.com. Check out some of our merchandise. We have shirts on there. We have patriotic uh, mugs and things like that. So you can certainly check us out. Uh, and if you see something that you like, um, certainly um, purchase it. All right, so until next time, uh, count your blessings and live a life of purpose. Good night. Good night. Bye, everybody. Happy Easter.